All right, so with interest rates doubling and real estate prices at sky high, we thought that this was the perfect opportunity to study 55 years worth of real estate market data and mortgage rate data in order to have the conversation. Do interest rates and recessions have a correlation that we can have a conversation about in order to predict the current housing market and if a crash is incoming? In case you don't know who I am, my name is Davin Sundvik with the House Hacker Tribe, and I give real estate investing advice to people who want to maximize their profits in real estate and reduce the risks of losing money along the way. So let's get started. Now, what we found within the data was pretty interesting, and there's some boring things that we got to cover first, unfortunately, in order to have an accurate conversation about this topic. So one of the boring things that we found is that where there were 26 different real estate uh, dips on the mortgage rate. So the mortgage rate has dipped 26 times over the last 55 years, which implies that if you want to wait for a good interest rate, two years, three years, four years might be a just a long enough time to see that happen. Now, on the other side of things, on the pricing side of things, we saw that there were only six real estate price dips on the Schiller Real Estate Price Index over the last 55 years, which means that it takes a much longer period of time to actually see a real estate price correction than it does in the mortgage rate price correction. Now, even though we saw a Schiller Price Index uh, dip six times, did we actually see a major correction six times? No, we actually only saw two major corrections. Uh, that was the 1990 to 1991 real estate correction and the 2008 to 2010 uh, housing market crash. So in case you're not familiar with any of those two pieces of history, that is when real estate markets have dropped in price over the last 55 years the most. And during these two periods of time, we can actually gather some really interesting pieces of data from it. Both of them happened when interest rates were above average. And so now we have to ask ourselves, what is our current interest rate? Is it actually above average? And the answer is no. So the average interest rate over the last 55 years is above 7%. So which means that if you're uh, getting an interest rate below 7%, you're actually getting a discount on your house. So when you see that interest rates are going from two and a half percent to five percent and headlines are saying that they've doubled, that's just to really grab your attention. It doesn't mean that we're really seeing a major real estate market crash yet. All it's really happening is, hey, you were getting an extreme discount and now you're just getting a much smaller discount, which isn't a great headline for uh, news outlets to get uh, attention and that's how they get clickbait and get your attention and so that way they can make more money. But unfortunately, that's not how the real estate market works. You can't just double the interest rate and expect a housing market crash to happen immediately. But we can use this data uh, to maybe try to see if there's some indicators within these two events and maybe predict a third event sometime soon. So what happened with both crashes is that the interest rates followed the pricing market, which means that we can't use the actual interest rate to perfectly predict when the real estate market is going to go down in price. However, we can see that both interest rates plateaued right in the middle of the uh, housing market dips, which means that if you see a interest rate plateau where you see interest rates go above 7%, and then they stay there for longer than like six months at the exact same interest rate or very, very close to the same interest rate, that could actually be an indicator of a weak housing market and that the market is going to crash. Now, it's probably not going to happen right at 7%. It's probably going to happen at some really high interest rate like 8%, 9%, or even closer to 10% like we saw in 1991. So, don't just look out for an interest rate of 7% and immediately think that the market's going to crash. You actually have to wait until you see that plateau happening, and that might be your indicator that the market is going to take a dive. So if the market doesn't uh, hit that 7% mark, or if it does hit that 7% mark, what are we going to see with actual prices in 2023 and at the end of 2022? What are my actual predictions? 
Unfortunately for the people who want an incoming crash, I've got bad news for you. I don't think it's going to happen this year. We're already halfway through the year. Obviously, we haven't seen it yet. So it's safe to say that it probably won't happen for the rest of the year because half the year's already gone by. But we have to see interest rates go above 7%. And so I do think that it will hit that eventually. I just think it'll take a lot longer than two or three months. I think it's going to be towards the end of this year, maybe like December 2022, maybe February 2023. We'll see those interest rates hit that critical 7% where we hit the average interest rate in history. And then once we hit that historical average, we're going to have to see what the real estate market does. Are interest rates going to steadily incline? Are they going to sharply incline? Are they going to go down? Because if the uh, if interest rates go down beneath 7% again, that implies that another bull run is going to happen. So there could be a lot of factors that cause a prevention or a delay in a market crash. So are there possibilities of a market crash that are incoming that I don't see? Absolutely. I'm not saying that we're perfect around here. All I'm saying is that if you're planning on the real estate market to take a dive within the next six months to a year, I would not be betting on your prediction. I would actually be betting in the exact opposite direction. So make sure you use that advice to make the most profit that you can and make the best decision for your family as possible. Like we uncovered in this video, it might be a great strategy to buy when interest rates are low instead of when prices are low, instead of you know essentially waiting for that price to dip because that could take years, uh, if not decades. So my name is Davin Sundvik. Hopefully you can comment down below and give me some feedback on how I can make the videos better. And if you like them, definitely give us a like and a subscribe. And we thank you for watching. Have a great day.